that said Tesla workers were sharing sensitive images recorded by customer cars. Cars are spying on drivers, and a growing chorus of privacy advocates and politicians say automakers aren't doing enough to protect consumer data. Collect gigabytes of personal data. They know who's driving it, where they're driving, huge amounts of data. To have a car that is connected with the outside world, any of those connections potentially could be targeted by hackers. In Black Hat 2018, researchers were able to take partial remote control of Tesla's autopilot software to make a vehicle dive bomb into the wrong lane. Tesla's cloud environment was breached last year, leading to a leak of sensitive data and theft of computer resources. In 2019, Regulus was able to spoof the GPS data point fed to the vehicle, a central data point in properly maintaining distance between vehicles, and navigating an autopilot, which caused the car to more or less freak out on the road. Well, hi there. My name's John with Blackberry Productions, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'd like to talk about Tesla and your privacy. But first, before we talk about that, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. This definitely helps me out, and it helps people who are looking for similar content around privacy in their Tesla, because it is a pretty niche topic. Um, and just in my research, there wasn't really a whole lot of content around improving privacy in your Tesla or even any other car to that matter, any other car that connects to the internet. So please consider uh, subscribing to the channel and liking the video. So privacy, I think when it comes to any company that deals with user data, I think the automatic default option I go with is do not trust them because I've seen a lot of things just in the industry. Uh, so just, just for some bit, uh, quick, quick background, um, I actually studied cybersecurity and counterterrorism and anyone who knows me knows that I incorporate privacy and security in my daily life and I'm a huge advocate for anonymizing your data and making it secure from other big companies out there. Right now I actually work in marketing and essentially what I did uh, was I actually sold what we call the CDP. Uh, which stands for customer data platform. And those are essentially software platforms that are used to gather telemetry and data on visitors on websites, for example. Uh, so the data could range from the browser you're using, the uh, resolution of your monitor, as well as something as simple as if your mic is on and if there's any feedback coming from that mic. So things like that, that that's, that's what customer data platforms gather on you. And uh, that's something that I have experience with. And it's, it's definitely scary the amount of data that those platforms gather on people. So you're probably asking yourself, uh, why is this relevant? Well, in my experience and what I've seen personally a lot of companies, they'll say, oh, we don't sell your data to third parties or anything like that. But the reality is a lot of companies, especially companies like Tesla, uh, Microsoft, Google, all of these big companies, they do work with other companies that have these customer data platforms and they rely on those companies to deliver targeted advertising to their customer base. And sometimes you just kind of have to ask yourself, if Tesla in their terms of service says that they don't share your data with third party advertisers or they don't sell your data, how are you getting targeted ads for Tesla content? And this is where my discrepancy is when it comes to privacy, uh, not just with Tesla, but with any company. The other thing to keep in mind is any time where a company can say that, uh, oh, we don't sell your data, in their terms of service, that terms of service can always change without, well, usually they, they do have some sort of email that they send out, but it's usually something that happens and it's not something that you can have a choice for, for, for example, in opting out of it. It's usually an email saying, oh, our, our terms of service has updated and it, and there's a link to the updates and you just have to scroll through like a Bible verse of just whatever they changed. Usually they don't even say what they uh, changed exactly. They just say the terms of service changed. And one thing to keep in mind is although their terms of service doesn't say that they sell your data, 
that terms of service could change at any time. So before I took delivery of my Tesla, even before that, I'll say when I started researching um, more about Tesla as a company, I wanted to know all the scandals. I wanted to know everything there is about their privacy track record as well as security. So that way, when I take delivery of my Tesla, I can go in and button down some of the things that they have in terms of just privacy holes as well as security on the vehicles. One thing I did um, that I know no one on YouTube has done yet because I, because I did the research, I looked it up, is I actually installed a, a VPN on my phone. So it's a self-hosted VPN called Tailscale and allows me to use my network, uh, my local network when I'm away from my apartment. And then I also use that in tandem with a application called AdGuard Home where you can install it either on a server that you host yourself, you can install it on a third party server. So if you have a server hosted in a different location, you can do that or you can host it on a Raspberry Pi. And essentially what AdGuard Home does is it blocks all known trackers and telemetry based on uh, lists that are created by the privacy community. And I wanted to see exactly what Tesla was gathering in terms of telemetry. Thankfully, I didn't see a whole lot of things on there, but there were a lot of questionable queries that I saw that was coming from Tesla. So I'm happy that AdGuard was able to capture and address those queries coming from Tesla. Aside from setting up AdGuard with Tailscale, I was also able to purchase a couple of camera blockers for the inside of the Tesla. And the last thing I did to make sure that the privacy on my Tesla was the best it could be was I actually opted out of data collection uh, within the Tesla and also within the Tesla app. And within the Tesla app, it's not as seamless as you might think. Uh, when I actually went in to the app to opt out it actually opened up a separate web page and you actually have to opt out through the tesla website as opposed to the app so i thought that was kind of weird so although my privacy protection methods aren't the most robust and they're definitely not perfect i am happy with the overall outcome of how i was able to manage some of the telemetry for example coming out of the tesla as well as some of the other things that I could control, like the camera within the inside of the interior. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it uh, informative. And this is definitely new for me if you haven't noticed, but uh, I've never been on camera before, so this is my first time. And if you did like this format, highly recommend uh, subscribing because I would like to do it a lot more. Also. Make sure you leave a like for the video uh, just so people can get this video recommended to them uh, in the event that they are interested in privacy as it aligns to owning a Tesla. So with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.